Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had an absolutely amazing weekend uh, as the markets decided they were going to have an amazing weekend with a huge gap higher uh, as the S&P is, uh, is up and running hard this morning. The NASDAQ is also up and running hard this morning. Uh, crude is up and gold is down, so we're seeing a, a little a little bit of everything today. Uh, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you get the alerts and the updates as they come. If you're not new to the channel, do me a favor, uh, share this channel with somebody else. Let's go ahead and spread the spread the love, as they have as they say. Um, would be, it'd be great to to grow the grow the channel and get it out there. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, S and P this morning we're up 33 points, and we're up 33 points on uh, the Trump trade news uh, you know, with uh, with China uh, and the good G20 summit. Now, one of the things that we talked about uh, over over the course of uh, of last week was the fact that we may have uh, limited market movement for the week because of the G20 summit. Now, funny, we started the week last week. Um, we started the week last week here, and we ended the week last week here. So we did have, you know, movement essentially brought us right back to where we were. Um, and then the, the news came out, and boom, we popped higher uh, right up through here. So last night in our live trade room, we were looking at, you know, if you wanted to try to fade some of this gap, you could maybe take a little bit of a breakdown. And that was good for about, I said, you know, on the on the video last night, we were talking about, you know, it may be good for five to 10 points max, um, which is about what it pulled. It went from 29.69 to 29.62. So it got uh, it got eight points. So um, not a huge move down. Remember, anytime you try to fade that kind of a gap, you're 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 playing with fire. But we did gap up through this area we had of supply. Now, this area of supply here uh, was found on the hourly chart. And I want to speak to this because this was an end of the day Friday that we came into the level. There is no way on God's green earth that I'd be willing to take that trade coming into the end of the day on a Friday with a G20 summit coming into play. Um, but I do want to point out another reason why that trade would be invalidated if you if you look at it. Here's our opposing fair price value area, right, right down in there. And so if you look at this, the width of this zone, that would be your your risk. And if I just take this down here, that would be a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So essentially what this, what this by, by this little bit of basing down here, by coming up, dropping, and then rallying into it, it turned this trade into essentially a one-to-one -one reward to risk scenario and a bigger picture upward trend. So lower probability setup. However, I'm going to leave the lines on the charts and I'm going to leave that area on the chart because oftentimes old demand or old supply will act as new demand An old area of resistance will act as a new area of support. So there's always the possibility that we do eventually fade back into here and this level still has some validity to it. Um, so I'm going to keep the level in place. Now, what happens if we if we don't come back into there? No big deal. Let let price continue to run. So I'm going to go down to a 15 minute time period to see <clears throat> in the overnights, are there any quality reversal points? Well, we actually hit our high right around the European market open and have been kind of basing around since then. So technically, you could take a breakout long above this region here. Uh, if we get some basing in front of it, you could take a, a breakout long above that region. We've got slightly higher lows coming into that area. So the breakout long is very much in play. If we break down from there, there is this little, um, oops, zoomed down there a little too much. There is this little area right in here. That could also come into play, but this area, you know, was formed at, um, you know, not the greatest time of day, uh, but still could certainly 
be uh, be a potential reversal point. So that's a that's a potential reversal point if price comes back down into this region, and then here's a potential breakout point. So where am I getting long? Well, I'm not. And or, excuse me, where am I getting short? I'm not. And I don't really, you know, I don't want to tug on Superman's cape. I don't want to pull into the wind, and I want to short the all-time high. And that's what I'm looking at here in the S&P. Now, the NASDAQ also had a gap up, uh, and the NASDAQ gapped up through its short confirmation entry. So I'm going to leave that area on the chart. I want to leave that level on the chart. Uh, we are now sitting right at that new high. If I move to the daily chart, you'll, you'll see... We're not quite yet to a new all-time high. Um, we got a little bit of a ways to go before we reach that all-time high. But our big picture trend is clearly in an upward environment. We are coming right close to the bottom of a prior gap. So um, be aware that we are coming to the bottom of a prior gap in the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ is our strongest performing of all of our markets today. Uh, this morning and so we are coming to a prior gap would I short this gap heck no um, I'm not gonna short that gap um, I'm gonna allow price to come back to a quality area of demand as a chance to get long same rough area exists here as in the uh, as in the S&P please remember that it is a Globex level on a 15 minute chart so that should tell you all you need to know right there. It's a Globex level on a 15-minute time period, so it's slightly lower probability. Now, that is the, the gapped position uh, where we can see some sort of a trade occurring. Next, uh, crude oil. So looking at crude oil. Now, crude oil uh, has come back up to its uh, supply area, and we had switched this supply area to a confirmation. And the reason we switched it to a confirmation is was because we came very close to it right in through here. Um, my issue with it now is that we've come into it and we're getting a little bit of a move away and we're kind of basing in front of this level. Um, and basing around the levels make them that much weaker. Now that level exists all the way back to here. And the reason that that level was created, we have a little bit of a drop, a little bit of a sideways price action, and then a very strong move away. This area here acting as a little bit of a, of a resistance point, um, and it's below this pivot. I still actually like this wick over wick level up here a bit better. I think that this one up here is a bit better of a level. This uh, 6165 by 6195 area I think is a, a slightly cleaner level, um, although we're bouncing off of this one at the moment. Uh, so what I'm going to do now that we're bouncing off of it, if you if you didn't get get short on this on the touch and go, I think that's fine. Matter of fact, I, I'm, I feel a little bit less confident about the level now that we've hit it, we dropped, and now we're kind of coming back up towards it. I do still like the other one down below it or up, up above it, knowing, however, that my big picture is still trading to the upside. So I need to be aware of that on the big picture that, that it's still trading this way you know, to the upside. Um, we could stall out before getting to this, this area here um, because of this little supply there, but we're you know, still in an upward trend with weakening momentum. And I can see that that momentum is weakening right here. Prices are still rising. My momentum is definitely falling. Okay, all right, so let me uh, get rid of all those. Now, well, one of the things that also is very obvious here with with uh, with uh, crude oil is we did have on our prior daily market commentary on Friday morning, this level identified. Now, let me uh, comment down below if you got into this level. This level here was the level that we rallied up from, concluded the gap. I did not get in on this one. And the reason I didn't is because it was the end of the day on Friday. And end of the day, Friday levels uh, tend to scare me a little bit. Now, you could have gotten in, but the key, if you would have gotten into this trade, is to have hedged it right off the bat. And you've got to hedge your your futures positions if you want to hold them over any sort of a weekend where there's going to be news announcements. How do I hedge a futures position? Well, I combine it with options. If you want to learn more about hedging options with futures, uh, go to tradersarmy.com. It's underneath free trading courses. So under trading courses, 
you navigate to the area that says free trading courses and it is uh, course number seven is combining options with futures. So this is a course that we, that we did on combining options with futures. It will give you what you need to understand about how to hedge your futures positions over a weekend so that you minimize your gap exposure. Because I'm sure, you know, the market's up, but there are people that were short going over the weekend and that are, and that are sweating this morning because they felt like, okay, the market might come down over the weekend. There's got to be people that were short. And so if they were short, how do they hedge that? How do they protect themselves? And that's what futures can do. All right, moving over to gold. So take a look at gold. Uh, gold, we had a gap down and it's continuing to trade down. Our level of demand stays in place where it was. And so now we're looking at the next level uh, up above us, this area right in here, a little bit of basing, strong move down. This is be the area where we are looking for our next potential reversal would be the gap fill zone right in there. All right, next, let's go take a look at the bonds and currency markets. So on our bonds, we had another gap over the weekend, um, but the gap that we had over the weekend, we didn't get a, uh, we didn't gap anywhere near our levels of demand or supply. So there's really nothing to add to the bond conversation. Uh, in the Aussie, we had pulled down from our little bit of an Aussie supply area and trading down our next level of demand is really comes into play somewhere down in here. Um, that area of supply that we pulled down from, I had the lines on the charts last night, pulled them off during the live trade room. Uh, if you wanted to try it, uh, you know, your hand is short coming out, you may get another bit of basing right, uh, right on top of here for a potential breakdown uh, below this level here. I think you may get a breakdown off of that uh, zone. In the euro, so our euro, we uh, we got a little bit of a breakdown from this area. We did get the uh, the desired basing below the b before the level. So this is one we were looking at uh, last evening. So the basing before the level did occur. Let me get rid of all these lines here. Uh, and so it gave you a good little move away uh, right in here with your your stop would be in that case above the, the last pivot, which would be this one right in here. So as we were coming down, I think the thing we talked about was we need to get the breakdown, but then on the two to one, you're gonna wanna make sure that you move that thing. And so uh, price came down to this opposing area here. We got definitely greater than the two to one in just a little bit. Uh, but if you were sleeping, no big deal. Um, now I think you could get a reversal trade off of this thing. So now let's look at the reversal trade. And in my mind, the reversal trade, we're starting to get a little bit of a movement here. Um, you've got a nice little wick over wick area right there. Let's see what, what if price comes back up into this region. It's not a great time of the day, though. That's the issue with it. Um, I would go, if you, if you want to try a reversal trade, you'd go candle to candle at this point. Uh, I think the four hours giving me a lower swing low and a lower swing high, and so it's okay to get short on any of these. If you didn't catch the breakdown, you can still get short. Um, now, by the way, if you did do the breakdown, then you, uh, you you caught a little bit of a nice move, but you still got another chance to get back in. Canadian dollar. So I was looking at the Canadian dollar last night and looking at this potential area here for a breakdown. Um, it kind of chopped around in here. It's still doing a lot of chop, and so we've had very little to no movement out of it. Um, I'm going to leave that area in there because that's creating its own fair price value area, but I think our reversals are going to be the better plays at this point down here for demand or up here for supply. Uh, let's take a look at the pound and the yen. So the Great British Pound, we've come into what could be a reversal area for demand. We switch this to a confirmation entry. Um, and so we've come into the zone and, and popped back out. So now you've, you've still got a, a decent move if price comes up out of, this, uh, out of this region. I don't like the fact that we're basing inside of here. So if you haven't gotten in, I wouldn't get in at this point. Uh, the fact that we're basing inside. If you did get in, then you still got your stop. Uh, your stop needs to be at the tightest. It would, or at the tightest, it would be below this wick right here. Um, and so you're still, you're still in it. It's just got a little bit of ways to go uh, before. If you're not in it, though, I wouldn't necessarily jump in it. I think that this actually sets up for a really nice reversal up ahead. Um, there's a couple of wick over wick levels on the fall down in price. This one here being the one that I like the most. 
and then the Japanese yen. Uh, Japanese yen, we had a really nice breakdown off of our yen position. It continued its moves down with a gap down. And so the next trade would be a reef, uh, a, a short back up to this gap fill area right in here. But all in all, lots of movement today. Don't try to chase the market. Let, for, let the market come to you. Uh, you very well could do a gap and go possibly in the morning. Trading the gap and go once, you know, once we're the way the gap and go works is once you're higher than the opening candles high, you get long and you stay in it until it gets below the opening candles low. Uh, and then you adjust your stop accordingly, specifically when you get a two to one reward to risk. And so we're, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's still off and running, uh, but don't, don't, don't catch yourself chasing. Uh, chasing is typically one of the most dangerous things you can do in the world of trading. Uh, if you are jumping in, follow your rules. It's okay to take a break out to the upside so long as it bases the right way to give you a reason to get in. So hope you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, please send me an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Later.